All right. Thanks for joining today. We're going to go over the uh, integration with Dope360 uh, that we have here at ProLine. And we love Dope360. They're a phenomenal platform for direct mail. And so we're going to be looking at um, how that connects. I'm not, my computer probably needs to be restarted. I'm getting a little bit of weirdness stuff popping out, but um, so I'm not sure what's causing that, but we will jump right in. So first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is inside of ProLine, go over to the integrations page and then Dope360. And this is our integration page for Dope360. Then you're gonna go into your Dope360 account. And first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go up to your account up here, go to more, and then scroll down to API access. We need an API token in order to uh, integrate. So we're going to create a token and just call that token ProLine. Copy that and then head back into the Dope360 page in ProLine, paste that in, and then enable the integration. Now, um, there is Another step that we do have to do here. So just having it connected like this does not necessarily mean that anything is going to go to Dope360. The other side to this is here in your account, uh, you need to decide where you want ProLine to trigger a Dope360 campaign. Uh, and so actually, before we even do that, we need to be going Dope360. We need to make sure that there is an automation set up here. And so this is what's going to be triggered by ProLine is these automations. And I, I'm not necessarily an expert on using Dope360. So this is really up to you and how you want to set up these campaigns or these automations. But we'll just kind of go through and, and create. We're going to create this test automation too. Um, and then you have some different options here, close and continue. Select the mailer that you want to use. Um, and then for trigger, you're going to select other, and then you're going to save and close. And then lastly, down here at the bottom, um, well, this actually, this doesn't even need to be activated right now. When you're ready to turn this automation on in Dope 360, you would go through and actually activate it. We're going to leave it in the testing uh, mode so that we don't accidentally trigger anything. All right. So going back to ProLine, you're going to go to a campaign in your ProLine account. And usually you'd want this campaign to be triggered by a stage change for a project. So in this case, when a project moves to one, this campaign is going to be uh, triggered. So we're going to go in here. And this campaign already has some tasks that are getting created. And we're going to add a Dope360 step. Dope360 direct mail step. And then we're going to click right here. And we're going to select the automation that we want to trigger from this list. And that coincides to what we just did in Dope360. So it's pulling in the list of different automations in Dope360. We select the one that we want and we save it. And now anytime this campaign runs, um, which is it's being triggered by the stage change. So whenever a project gets moved into the one uh, stage, that's Dope360 campaign is going to trigger and is going to, that, that mail is going to get sent through Dope360. Now, um, one thing that we've added on this integration to give you a little bit extra control is now you can exclude projects from that step. So even if the step runs for a project, you can have a tag, um, you know, I can just select blacklist here, or you know, maybe you wanna have like a no postcards tag in your ProLine account, um, which all that can, we'll, we'll add that real quick. So we'll add a no postcards tags. So we're gonna go to projects, scroll down to tags, and we'll create a no postcards. And then we can select that from this list here. And so now anytime we tag a project, uh, so if, if you don't want ProLine to send 
uh, anything to this project or for this project, you can go in and select that no postcards tag. And now when it gets moved over into this stage and it runs this campaign, it's going to skip over that dope 360 direct mail step. And so that'll take a few seconds for that to run. And so we'll that will never, never pop into this, this automation. I believe it would show up in list normally. So I'm not sure how it works when it's in testing mode. Let's let's check this. We do Indiana Jones, go to one. Give that a second. So I be, if I believe, I'm not sure if it, this being in testing mode um, will stop it from adding anything to the list. I don't think so. I think it should allow us to test and add things to the list there. But uh, we should see something for Indiana Jones come in, but not something for Aaron Flanders. I don't remember which one I picked. Yeah, it may be that when it's in testing mode, it doesn't, it may not actually add things to the list. But uh, if this was activated, that would show up here in the automation list for this automation. And then it could, it would, it would run, but it would not show up for Aaron Flanders since it is excluding that tag. So that tag is on the project. So, all right. So that pretty much sums it up. Do you guys have any questions about how that works? Um, any thoughts, feedback on that integration? I have a question. We were talking to a client today, um, Cody, and he has the siting and the roofing separate and he has different postcards associated. So does he need, like, is it best to have a tag associated with that for the to trigger or does he just need additional phases in the pipeline? So that you would, in that case, uh, if he wants to do different things, depending on which service is being provided, then you would add multiple different uh, conditions in the triggers for a stage. So for one, you could have this first one. Um, so if he's doing siding and roofing, primarily roofing, but some siding only jobs. The way I would set this up is select siding here under project services mm -hmm. as a um, condition. And then for the campaign, we would go and create a different campaign. Um, let's put this under, it's under job updates or is there production, the other? Yeah, put it under here. So we'll have um, pre-production siding. So now we have another campaign here for pre-production siding. And then we're going to go back to this one and we're going to select that here. A pre-production siding. Okay, so now what's going to happen is when the project is moved into the one stage, it's going to start the pre-production siting if it has the siting service on it. Um, if it doesn't, then it's gonna go to the pre-production checklist. I think um, it, it, one thing though, is like if, he, if it's a job that has siting and roofing, this is gonna send them all to siting. So maybe okay. a better way to do it would be, uh, I think. is we might need to be the other way around. So I'm gonna move this up and select um, roof replacement here. And then we could possibly add another trigger for roof repair, or we could just have maybe a general one here at the bottom that starts.
So there, this can be set up in a lot of different ways, but basically it's it's a list of conditions that Proline is going to go top to bottom. So whichever one it matches first is the campaign that's going to start. So the way I have it set up right now is if it matches roof replacement, it's going to start the regular pre-production checklist. Then if it doesn't match that, it's going to go to the next one and it's going to see, well, does it have siding? If it has siding, it's going to go to the siding one. And then lastly, anything that doesn't match either of those is then going to go to pre-production checklist, or we could select a whole other campaign. You can have any number of triggers here or any number of conditions on this trigger um, to start different campaigns. So now I can go into this pre-production siding and I can add a different DOPE 360 direct mail step and I can choose a different automation for it. Got it. And so on this one, it's gonna start that test automation too, but if it's siding, now it's going to instead start that other automation here. Perfect. So, uh, and then one thing that we're gonna have in the future is, so this is, this whole thing is a single trigger. So when a project is going into the one campaign, it's gonna start one campaign, or sorry, the one stage. When a project goes into the one stage, one campaign is gonna get started. It's, go, it's gonna be, it's gonna start this campaign or it's gonna start this campaign. What we're going to be adding, and it's going to make this page a little bit more complex, but we're going to have the ability to actually have more than one trigger. So you can have this, and then you could have another whole set of conditions down here and start two simultaneous campaigns. So it's going to allow for more creativity around, because um, there's some things, it's like there's might be items that are the same for siding and roofing, but then other items that are different. So maybe the DOPE 360 is different, but maybe the tasks that get created are the same. And so that, and so I, the, when we add these this multiple trigger functionality, it's going to allow you to have one campaign that does everything for all projects for those things that are common to everything. And then you can separately have a campaign that's starting the specific campaign for DOPE 360. So that's gonna make this even more powerful and allow for more creativity around that. At the moment, our whole system is limited to a single campaign at a time for a project. So uh, we will, but that will be a, a thing that's coming down the line. But as it stands right now, this would be the, the way to, to separate that and have it start the right campaign. Perfect. So, all righty. Uh, any, other, any other questions, guys? All right. Well, thank you for coming today. Turn off the recording.